and uh, yeah, I went a little nuts with the uh, drilling. <laughs> uh, got a little crazy. What to do with the CRF 230F? A bike with so much potential to be a great bike, and it is a great bike for the right person. But as far as being a race-ready motocross bike, forget it. Without radical mods and a lot of money dumped into it, you're better off just buying a brand new CRF 250R. My competitive racing days are behind me now, so I'm regulated to some little local events where I can only hope to place in mid-pack in the amateur division if I'm lucky. And it's not because I don't have the physical health to do it, it's more that I simply lack the drive. The days of win at all costs are long behind me. So I picked up this little CRF 230 for a measly $500, which was a steal at the time. I did have to do a little bit of clutch repair on it, but other than that, it was a perfect running machine. A little beat up, it had seen better days. I actually did go out and race the thing, as is condition that turned out to be a big mistake. So I went back to the drawing board and I thought how can I improve this thing? First off the jetting and gearing was way off. The suspension was soft as a heated marshmallow in July, bottoming badly on every jump. So first to fix the power delivery via the jetting and gearing and stiffen up the suspension was first in order to keep my 190 pound body from slamming into the gas tank again. So as you saw in the last episode we did a complete budget fork spring, fork seal, oil job. I also decided to go ahead and splurge for the Racetech gold valves to provide some better dampening control as the stock CRF 230 lacks any kind of adjustment clickers on its forks. You can check out the details of the fork job in my previous video. I also replaced the stock spring with a spring from BBR as it was hideously soft and bottoming out on everything although not as badly as the forks. With those things now fixed, the bike was so much better. It was like a brand new bike. It certainly wasn't going to beat any CRF250R yet, but I might give a less experienced rider a run for his money. So that got me thinking. The CRF250R, which is Honda's full race motocross bike, which retails at over $8,000, was way out of my league. So I thought, what else can I do with the CRF230 to make it at least somewhat competitive for motocross racing. Horsepower gains would certainly be a big start, but beyond jetting, an exhaust system, opening up the airbox, and adding a CDI box, the cost of engine work like a big bore kit, porting, larger valves, and carburetor were presently out of my budget. So that got me thinking about weight loss. Not for myself, of course, but for the bike. If I could knock off, say, 10 pounds, would I notice an improvement in the handling, especially unsprung weight down at the wheels? I'm thinking, how much weight can I lose for free? How much weight can I lose for a small amount of cash? Those were questions that became my quest for lightening the CRF 230. The CRF 230 introduced in 2003 is virtually unchanged in 2021. It's basically the same bike. There's been some small, very small incremental changes, but it's basically the same bike that came out in 2003. Mine is a 2004. They've probably sold millions of these things all over the world. It does come in a milder street legal version as well, the CRF L. It's too bad we can't make a separate racing class for these types of bikes to get the cost of racing motocross back down to a reasonable level where it used to be in days past. The cost of racing these days has become so expensive it's turned a lot of people off. So is it possible to easily take off 10 pounds off this bike? How about 15 pounds? Do I hear 20 pounds? To a race car guy, 10 pounds is nothing. That's like changing a muffler or something. Honda and other motorcycle companies have been working for decades to get dirt bikes down to absolute minimum weight. Minimize the weight of these bikes with the use of aluminum and lots of plastic. The CRF weighs in with a dry weight, meaning no oil or fluids, of 238 pounds. Now that may not seem like much, but considering that Honda's newest CRF 250R motocross bike weighs in at only 204, 204 pounds. That's 35 pounds weight differential. 
Not to mention the 250's 39 water-cooled horsepower on top of superior suspension versus the 230's 19 horsepower air-cooled and, well, less than stellar suspension. You can see the obvious challenge here. But then again, the CRF 230 has a manufacturer's suggested retail of less than half the cost of the 250, giving you $4,000 to play with. Would investing $4,000 in the CRF 230 give you a better bike than the 250? The short answer is no. But to have a rock solid, much more simple, reliable dirt bike with six speeds with electric start for half the price, and maybe say a couple thousand dollars invested, could you have a truly versatile performance dirt bike ready to tackle any terrain for a wide variety of riders? Maybe. That's why I'm impressed with this little bike, and I decided to take on this project. So, the first step was just taking off the parts one by one and weighing each one separately. This turned out to be a major pain, very time consuming, but I wanted to keep an accurate record of what I was doing as I was doing it. I wanted to keep a track of not only the parts that were taken off, but the parts that were replaced. So I had an accurate weight of the part before and after it was replaced with something that was lighter, like aluminum or plastic or drilled out or cut. So, some of the things that I removed completely that I was no longer going to use were the kickstand, the headlight, the air shrouds, the air box top, the throttle push cable, the front wheel cover, and the battery hold down strap. One of the biggest savings is, of course, the exhaust. Any aftermarket exhaust is going to save you around 3 pounds. The stock Honda exhaust weighs almost 8 pounds. The next thing is the battery. The stock Honda battery weighs over 5 pounds. A new lithium battery will save you around 3 pounds. Replacing the stock brake pedal with an aluminum one is good for about a quarter pound. The shift lever is nearly the same. You can find these anywhere from $20 to $30 on eBay or Amazon. The stock rear sprocket, depending on what sprocket you buy, will also save on the all-important unsprung weight. Going with an all-aluminum sprocket certainly saves weight, but they wear out very quickly, so I instead went with this combo steel sprocket with steel teeth, along with a lighter drilled out front sprocket that managed to save me more than half a pound. And since the sprockets were worn out, I now needed a chain, so I went with the DID X-ring chain that's not only lighter, but has less drag on the engine than their regular O-ring chain. I purchased a fairly inexpensive aftermarket aluminum bling bling kit that included aluminum motor mounts, wheel spacers, chain tensioners, and several of the caps and covers for the engine, all of them way lighter than the originals. I also purchased some of what I thought were pretty inexpensive aluminum foot pegs. I think they sent me back about 25 bucks. These are really nice and wide and save nearly another quarter pound. The front brake pads were completely worn out, so I bought some carbon fiber pads that were good for another half an ounce. As you can see, we're getting down to ounces now. There's several inexpensive aftermarket CDI rev boxes on the market, and all of them will save you at least a couple ounces, and I noticed a definite improvement in the way the bike performed. It was snappier and revved out farther now. I also purchased an aluminum nut bolt and washer kit for around $25 and was able to replace many of the bolts that didn't require much strength. Remember, you cannot torque these down very tight. They don't have much strength. And I used Loctite on all of them, but that was good for another three quarter pound of weight savings. I purchased all these on eBay with some careful shopping and found what I thought were some pretty good deals. I started getting a little crazy with the drilling thing drilling out my rear brake arm and my seat pan, which turned out to be a wash because the new seat cover I bought was actually a bit heavier than the stock Honda seat cover, so no weight savings there. But it is really nice and very grippy. I also replaced the handlebars with some Pro Taper bars that I also found on eBay, used for about 25 bucks. They were not bent and they worked awesome. However, I did have to buy some aftermarket 
clamps for the bars, another 20 bucks. So again, that was a wash, no weight savings there, but they really work well and they really flex and help soak up the harsh bumps. Well worth it. Removing the plastic shrouds as well as the skid plate is good for about one and a half pounds, but the skid plate is something that really is not worth you casing it on a rock and breaking your cases. Plus, it helps the bike slide over instead of hanging up on obstacles. So I really don't recommend removing that. And as far as the tank shrouds, it saves one pound, but without them, it just makes the bike look so butt ugly. I just had to put them back on. The next stop was the machine shop where my friend John Nagelson, who is not only an absolute genius when it comes to the fine machining of metal, but he was also an integral member of the California High School Robotics team that has won three high school world robotics championships starting in 2011. He did me the favor of drilling out my rear axle, my front axle, and the swing arm pivot bolt. That was good for about a pound of weight savings. In addition to John's machinist and robotic skills, he's also an avid skateboarder, motorcyclist, and car racer. He can produce everything from car parts to skateboard components to movie props. His knowledge runs especially deep in the world of sprint cars and their engines. His father Jack is a longtime sprint car racer and professional engine builder with 35 years of experience in racing and engine development. John also machined the CRF starter gear by several ounces, not an easy component to work with as he explains it here. So the linear distance is that number and draw that, and draw that, draw. Uh, and then revolve that, but that gives you a great idea of the cross section. So, like in this component, there's this very thick, heavy hub in here, and there's some weight to be taken out around there. And then this wall is pretty thick in this dimension. So, we can go and relieve a bit of that as it is relieved on this side, maybe relieved on this side, maybe save some weight. Did you follow all that? <laughs> Mouthful of words. So, this is my personal favorite, this item here. This is John's creation. There's just something about polished, metal, shiny objects that I find strangely attractive. <laughs> the, the one thing out of this development that's been through a couple of different revisions, um, some more painful than others, uh, but I'm pretty happy with this linkage system. Sprint car engines have different linkage uh, and butterfly. Contact John or Jack if you have any need of their services. These guys know engines. So, I suppose you want me to cut to the chase and tell you how much weight was cut altogether. But before we get there, first, I want to talk about the difference it made on the bike. The closest thing I can find, it's about a, I don't know, 15 minute drive from my house. It's just a bunch of sand, but it's got some sand whoops so we can check out the fork action and uh, just do some quick testing. It's not going to be any epic track day, but uh, it's the only thing I've got that's close by. So here we go. I took it out and with the new springs front and rear, the Race Tech gold valve emulators and the forks, they worked beautifully. The forks were no longer harsh, they no longer bottomed out, they soaked up the bumps like butter. The rear end with a stiffer spring made a big improvement as the old dampening was kind of slow. So it, the stiffer spring kind of speeded up the rebound dampening, so it worked out pretty good. And it's definitely a big improvement. The power gains with the exhaust and the proper jetting and the air box opened up and the CDI rev box and the reduced weight, especially the unsprung weight at the wheels, all came together to make a huge difference that I can really feel. The bike really responds now much better than before. I could still use a little more power, but that's another video and another project. When all was said and done and all the differences accounted for between the steel and aluminum pieces, I wound up with a grand total of... ...16.2 pounds of weight loss on the CRF 230. But wait, Tom, you said 20 pounds. Well, I didn't quite make the 20 pound mark, but 
Then I remembered that old racing trick. Gasoline weighs about 6.3 pounds per gallon, right? How much gas do you think you're going to burn in a 15 or 20, maybe 30 minute motocross race? A gallon? Maybe less than a gallon? So instead of having that extra 6 pounds or more up high on the motorcycle, the last place you want it, why not just run a gallon less? You'll still have plenty of gas to finish your race, and now you've reached 20 pounds of weight loss. Now. The next project begins of reducing another 10 pounds of weight. However, it's not on the motorcycle, but then that's a whole nother video. So, until next time, thanks for watching and please do subscribe. Pretty cool. GoPro stop recording.